Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little, I'm here today with the 15th episode of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand I played recently in a $100 buy-in online tournament. As you see, I've lost a few chips already, I believe we probably started with 3,000, so that's worth mentioning. Uh, Q Magic raises from second position, and with kings here, I think you can actually call or re-raise. If, re if you do call, you have to realize that you're not really planning on folding on too many flops. But I think 3-betting here is going to be my standard. However, if you're sitting here in Q-Magic's seat and you get 3-bet by J. Cardshark in 3rd position, you can be pretty confident that J. Cardshark has something very good. So, if you're in his shoes, don't be too scared to get away from whatever you have. We get cold called here by Frigida. And, you know, honestly, I, I'm a big proponent of never cold calling. I think that if you have a hand like Queen's or ace-king here, you can probably just re-raise and get it in. And if you have something like jacks, tens, ace-queen, you should probably just fold. And the problem with calling is that if the flop comes like queen, say he has pocket tens, and the flop comes ace-king three, if I bet, he's going to fold. Say he has pocket tens and it comes eight, four, two, if he bets and I'm still willing to put money in, I have jacks beat. So really, there are there are like virtually no good flops or pocket jacks besides or pocket jacks or pocket tens besides when they make a set, which isn't going to happen that often. And obviously, he's not getting quite good enough odds to set mine. So I think you either need to be playing your hand for maximum value, trying to get it all in, or folding. You'll see some players call in this spot with stuff like nine eight suited or ace jack suited stuff like that, and I think that's obviously atrocious. So uh, I think regardless of what this Fragita has, it's going to be a pretty bad play. Then we get shoved on by a Blatty, and notice he only has 1,800 chips, so most likely he has lost his chips earlier in this event doing something probably not very smart. Maybe not smart, maybe smart, who knows. It's tough to say, but in general, if you see a guy that's already lost like half a stack, and he's then shoving it all in over a raise, a three bet, and a cold call, you can be pretty confident he's not that great of a player on average. And of course, he could have just had like aces and lost earlier, and now he has aces again, but you can't be too concerned with that. So Q Magic folds and it's up to me. With Kings, I'm obviously not folding. Um, you know, when you're in a tournament and you have like Kings, even if I had like Queens here, I, I think it'd be inconceivable to fold. If I had Ace King, I think it's a little bit closer, but I would still probably go with Ace King. In this spot, you really just have to give Alabadi a range and see how you're doing against that. And it's sort of a difficult thing to do because Alibody could have a very tight range, or he could just be a total maniac with stuff like 9-8 and um, Ace-4 and stuff like that. So it's kind of tough to say, not knowing exactly how this player plays. But in general, if I had something like, I want to say Jacks are better here, and probably Ace-King, I would, I would go all in here. Anything else I'm going to be folding. But interestingly enough, my entire 3-betting range in this spot versus an early position Razor is going to be like Ace-King, Aces, Kings, and Queens. And maybe jacks, and that's that's about it. I'm flatting pretty much everything else. So I think Alibadi's shove is pretty bad, unless he has an extraordinarily premium hand. One other thing worth mentioning is that if I have like Ace King here and for, with Fredrita behind me, I mean if if I'm if I'm gonna play those hands, I'm just gonna go all in. Obviously, I'm gonna go all in with my my whole range. If I had aces here, I would go all in just purely for balance. I'm not really gonna get fancy and try to figure out a way to induce them to come along. I think the best way to go about doing this is to go all in with the whole range. But you do have to be concerned that you will get called because if Fredrita has either ace, king, or jacks, he's probably just jacks are. I think if he has queens, he would have three bet preflop. I think if he has tens, he's gonna fold to a shove. So I think the only hands we're gonna get called by here are jacks and ace, king. Uh, maybe that's a little bit. Maybe I'm assuming a little bit too much, but I think that's what's going to happen a lot of the time. So, if Fredrita has Ace King or Jacks, I'm not too sure if he'll fold or not. So, if in this situation, if I had Jacks exactly, I think I would still go all in with it because it's obviously tough for him to have Jacks, and he may fold Ace King, and he may find a call with tens, which of course would be no good. Um, if I had Ace King, I would go all in again to try to get him off some of those other hands, like something like tens. So. I said I would sh I would shove my whole range. I actually like to call, and I, I don't like this. I think this is bad. Um, you know, if it's bad, it's not like super bad, <laughs> um, because as long as you're doing the same thing with the whole range, I think it's fine. In some lower stake tournaments, I do think calling in this spot would be much better than shoving. 
And in higher stake tournaments, I think shoving would be much better than calling. And it's, it's really just a factor of what your opponents think is strong and what your opponents think is weak. I think in the lower stake games, guys are going to view a call here as a little bit weaker than the, a little bit weaker than they would a shove because they're like, oh man, I got to call all those chips. But in a high stakes game, they realize that you're just going to try to get fold equity with the weaker portions of your range. So lower stake games, I don't mind this. Uh, higher stake games, I would I would shove every time. Fredrita does shove, which is fantastic because you know we almost always have them crushed. And we do get it in against Jax and Ace-8, and we win a nice pot. And I'm not going to talk about my opponent's plays in this video, but if you check out part two of this week's episode, I will discuss both my opponent's plays and what I think about them. But in general, I don't think either of them played their hands too well. So I'll discuss that in part two of this 15th episode of Weekly Poker Hand. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them in the uh, comment box, and also feel free to send in some hands. I, I'm, I'm more than willing to review your hands, and share this share this podcast with your friends, because you know I do this for free. I'm, I'm trying to give back to the poker community, and if no one knows about it, obviously I'm not going to re really be giving back much. So share this with all your poker playing friends, and let me know what you think. And if you, there's any way you think I could improve in this podcast, let me know. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.